at 11. Blown away, a bounce house with children inside gets caught in the wind. And food carts kicked out. I just think it's ridiculous. It's a shame. Why cart owners in one of Portland's largest and oldest pods are being evicted. Capping the kicker. How Oregon's governor wants to put a limit on your refund and where the money would go. Plus a very sweet 16 to a Portland institution. But do you know how Voodoo Donuts got its start? It took a little while. It wasn't a huge hit right off the bat. Your news starts now. Our top story, the end is near for one of the most popular and largest food cart pods in Portland. The carts at Southwest 10th and Alder draw crowds of tourists and downtown workers alike. And cart owners just got notices to vacate. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm Dan Haggerty. They have to be out by the end of next month so the construction can start on a new high rise. KGW's Mike Benner is live downtown. Mike, it's pretty devastating news for a lot of people. That's right, Dan. The food cart owners and the people who eat here are really upset. These food carts have been a staple on this block for years. And one of the reasons why, you can get food from around the world right here, but only for another month. Business is good. Thursday afternoon inside the Sumo Sushi Food Cart, owner Danny Chan whips up a poke bowl for a loyal customer. But he won't be doing this here for much longer. I was a little bit shocked. Nope. Earlier in the day, Chan and the dozens of other food cart owners at Southwest 10th in Alder received this. A notice to vacate by the end of the day on June 30th. I didn't want to believe it, but it, it is what it is. Um, I'm kind of upset, but we can't really do nothing about it. It does suck that, you know, we have to vacate, but I mean, we're going to still keep going. It's not going to stop this. Replacing the popular food cart pod will be a building you cannot miss. Check this out, a 35-story, 1 million square foot high-rise, complete with shops, a hotel, and private condos, among other things. The uh, Development Commission was really interested in the massing of the tower, how the materials fit together for the tower, which is primarily glass. I think this is what makes Portland, Portland, all the awesome food carts. Those who frequent the food cart pod are less than thrilled that development is forcing the carts to move out. I just think it's ridiculous that so this this food cart block has been a part of this community for years and years. Our secret pokey sauce. Danny Chan at Sumo Sushi understands the frustration. He vows to reopen his cart elsewhere, though he knows another location won't be able to offer what this one does. I would say 80% of the customers are tourists and we just get to see a lot of people from around the world. All right, perhaps this will lessen the blow for food cart enthusiasts. The new high rise is expected to have a food hall. The hope is that it brings the same energy these food carts bring. As far as construction goes, it should start late this summer or early fall. Back to you. Boy, a food hall, I don't think quite the same as the food cart pod. Lots of disappointed folks. Thank you, Mike. Portland State put out an alert tonight warning students to be aware of their surroundings. That after a woman saw a man taking a video up her skirt. The school says it happened just before 2 o'clock today as a student was walking upstairs in Kramer Hall. Campus police are looking for the man. He's described as a white man in his 30s with short blonde hair. He's about 6 feet tall and thin. He was wearing a blue polo shirt, khaki pants, and square framed glasses. In Washington County, three family members are facing charges in a child abuse case that spans more than a decade. Benito Juarez Hernandez, his brother, and his brother's ex-wife have all been indicted. They're accused of abusing at least five kids in Beaverton and Aloha. Detectives say the first case of abuse was more than 15 years ago. They also believe that there are other victims out there. If you know something, Call the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Benito was actually already in prison, serving time for an unrelated child sex abuse case. Let's talk about money and what the government is doing with yours. It's a record-breaking year for the Oregon kicker refund, but some lawmakers want to use that money instead of returning it to taxpayers. A new proposal by Governor Kate Brown would cap the kicker for the state's highest income earners. While you're listening to this story, you can let us know what you think by voting in our viewer voice poll on KGW.com slash vote or on your KGW app. KGW's Catherine Cook is here now with a look at where money from that proposed cap limit would go. Catherine? Well, Laurel, the proposed cap is $1,000.
that's more than most Oregonians will ever see in a kicker. But for those who come to expect it, it would definitely be a loss. Governor Brown hopes their loss will help offset some big challenges, including PERS. When you get a bonus, do you buy something you want, pay off debt, or invest it? In a sense, Governor Kate Brown proposed doing all of the above with this year's record-setting kicker refund. On Thursday, she shared her proposal to set aside $500 million of the projected $1.4 billion kicker. That money would go to three places, rural housing, rural broadband, and PERS. This would be a one-time proposal. I think it's fiscally responsible and uh, is makes common sense. To get the $500 million, Brown proposed capping the kicker at $1,000. That means the average taxpayer wouldn't see a difference in their kicker refund. This is still a kind of a tax the wealthiest kind of a strategy. KGW political analyst Len Bergstein. What the governor is saying is the most wealthy of us don't need that as much as all of us do to solve the PERS problem. The important thing is Taxpayer Tim Sercom agrees. He hopes lawmakers vote to enact Brown's proposal. The legislature should consider uh, by the two-thirds majority to retain the kicker and use it to pay down the PERS liability of state and local governments. Take all of it and give it back to the schools or the state but I absolutely do not think it should go back to consumers. This would be a one-time deal with the kicker but the way some taxpayers see it, PERS gotta take your medicine sometime. is perpetual. There's a big bunch of medicine coming our ways. So what's an average kicker refund look like? Well, last year for someone who made $60,000, it was around 227 bucks. The kicker that year was 464 million. Laurel. Thank you, Catherine. And don't forget to let us know if you agree with that cap. Just go to KGW.com slash vote or click the viewer voice tab on your KGW app. We'll reveal the results of our poll a little bit later in this newscast. A candle in a black cloth adorns Senator Jackie Winter's desk on the Oregon Senate floor today. Her colleagues met to reflect on her life. There was many things about her that just being there, you you were better. Jackie was a forgiving person and she was a compassionate person, had a big heart. And she had a remarkable resume. She was the first African-American Republican elected to the Oregon House in 1998. She moved on to the Senate in 2002. State leaders say Winters stood for people, not politics. Winters passed away after a battle with lung cancer. She'd been absent from the legislature for weeks. The last bill that she championed passed, though, just a few days ago. It reforms Oregon's juvenile justice system. In a developing story, President Trump says he is slapping a 5% tariff on all Mexican imports. He wants to put pressure on the country to crack down on the surge of Central American migrants trying to cross the U.S. border. Mexico's president tonight is responding to the threat, saying he's sending a delegation to the U.S. to try to negotiate a peaceful solution. The tariff is supposed to go into effect June 10th. President Trump says the percentage will gradually increase, quote, until the illegal immigration problem is remedied. Now, here's a look at some of the most common products the U.S. imports from Mexico. Vegetables, got to throw avocados in there, too. Cars, oil, medical instruments, and beer. Not beer. Caught on camera. Look at this video here. This is a moment of bouncy house filled with a lot of kids begins to blow away. This happened this morning in Siberia. Five children were hurt when that large uh, inflatable castle lifted up, flipped over, crashed down to the ground near a crowded street. Man, it's hard to see. You know, uh, three children suffered serious injuries in all this. Investigators say it all happened because that castle was not securely fastened in place. Mm. New tonight, a wild finish to the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Seriously, it was wild. You don't hear that every year, but for the first time, this competition ended with an eight-way tie. Eight. It's never ended with more than two winners before. The judges, they say they simply ran out of challenging words as the contestants just kept getting one after the next, after the next right. There they are, all the winners, all eight of them. They're going to take home $50,000. If you, if you want to see what it's like, to study like these kids. These are the, the, the words that they were spelling correctly, the ones that just they couldn't stump any of them, not one of the eight. I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce them, yet alone spell them. But congratulations to all of those winners. 
$50,000, it's pretty nice. Can you spell congratulations? Uh, yeah, C-O-N-G-R-A-T-U-L-A-T-I-O-N-S. You cheated. <laughs> it's on the prompter. <laughs> I couldn't even say any of those words. Coming up. We're going to go under the sea. Under the sea. It's one of the coldest places on Earth. We're going to hear from University of Oregon researchers studying what's happening under Antarctica's ice. Plus, no new friends? That's apparently the status quo here in the Northwest. More on the new survey that says we aren't the friendliest bunch. We're friends, right? I think so. And as Voodoo Donuts turn 16, hear how they struggle to get their start. And we've got a sweet sunset for you. I'm Matt Safino. Also, what you can see in the morning light before the sun actually rises. And then going forward, we've got June looming. There's no valley gloom. We've got more flash and boom and the temperatures will zoom.